very exciting and bringing a lot of uh, sentimental uh, feelings and memories uh, that um, really I don't know how to, to phrase it, but this is really great. Um, I'm going to give an extremely serious uh, lecture because uh, as you well know, we have started together our studies and we were students together and we took some anatomy and uh, from there I just continued and really flourished in the domain of paleoanthropology and uh, skeletal remains that we have excavated in sites. Well, pretty early, 1946, and the immense importance of this evolution and the, is the scope that you can see it covers all the continents, most of the continents, I missed one or two. Uh, and um, you can see that the evolution of a scholar is actually built of different items and different components. This is actually a multidisciplinary uh, aspect of, of the trying to come up with the idea of how the scholar is looking like and what built it and what is the type of the evolution that we can say. I'm, I'm not going to use a lot of jargon because of the audience. I don't think the evolutionary jargon will be good here. But anyhow, this is really what makes the, the person, the family, the friends, the archaeology, the chef. We'll uh, speak a little bit about the chef. Um, the colleagues, of course, this is part of the, and they're all intertwined with the one another, and the professional, the person on the top, covers everything and is built of all these components that we are going uh, to see. Um, the friends, <laughs> we're going to cover a few topics, but the friends are a, a very important issue, and as you can see here, uh, this is in the very initial, the beginning of the career, and the background is false, because it should have been something totally different. Uh, just dirt or just a skeleton, but that's how we all began. And uh, some of the figures here you may identify, and some of them are sitting here, uh, in a little bit different form, and that's also part of the evolution aspect that I'd like to talk about. Uh, next, please. Um, a part of this uh, a topic with the friends is also associated with the location. Where geographically are we filmed and where have we been and what actually formed us uh, through the years? And this is really an important uh, feature. So, uh, if we go now into archaeology, uh, the beginning of archaeology is a very tough experience. We lose lots of students in the first digs. Here, I think it's Tel Yarmut, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I want you to see that in those days, early days, we were not uh, aware of the UV factors, and uh, we were also capable of showing part of our bodies that today some of us try to avoid. <laughs> Obvious reasons. Um, the archaeology is a, a shovel, a pick and shovel, and it's very difficult. And we really decided at the very early stage that we have to shift into something more elegant. And so in the next slide, you can see Yoel um, in a different form. The garments, I mean, the shirts are much better. Uh, the, the work is much finer. The company is fantastic, yeah? And I want to um, add here a word about Ella and Dasaf and thank them for having us here and for producing this fantastic evening. And as you can see, the work is dirt. It's a very dirty business. And, um, but some of us really have a delicate positions and, and attempts how to fill in and how to behave in the field. And then you can see that despite the dirt, my mother calls it dirt, yeah? despite the dirt, it's not sediment. Despite the dirt, you can see that Joel is well-dressed. And I will, I will <laughs> provide a few more words about this topic in, in a few minutes. Uh, but he's very serious. A little dirt is sticking here and there. 
And uh, uh, he, he, here he is training for the household chores that we know he is very much engaged with. Um, Ubadiyah was uh, one of the formative um, stages of our careers, both Yoel's and many others who are sitting here who participated. There was no, no shading. Uh, shirts were, you know, different. Uh, but uh, if those of you have never seen this uh, um, Pelerovis, or perhaps he changed his taxonomic name by now, you can come to the Israel Museum and see it in exhibit, and this is, attracts a lot of uh, attention even today. Um, archaeology is also supervision. Here you can see Yoel standing and uh, giving orders, instructions how to sieve, where to sieve, and this is actually where, in terms of evolutionary process, he was actually formulating very important elements that will take place in his career a few years later. Um, okay, so here we can see the development and the evolution mm. of the designed and produced mm. a very important. You remember the name of it? It was Barak One. Barak One, it was, and there was an improvement. The second one was Barbar One. So, as we've seen, the archaeological work is extremely tiring. And one has to come up with ideas how to rest in a cave and what would be the best conditions. You can see Yoel in the rear of the cave where it's a little bit. In the rear of the cave, it's sometimes cleaner and also cooler. So that's also part of the uh, organization of the dig. OK, uh, it's not a simple uh, profession, archaeology. And I say archaeology, but this is also, of course, anthropology, because as it happens, from time to time, we find skeletons, and uh, we have to deal with it. Uh, the map uh, is missing a key site. Uh, in the career of Yoel, uh, Kebara. But I wanted to show you the uh, the aspects of uh, the geog geographical aspects where he was conducting his activities, and this is only some of the sites that he was engaged with. Uh, Nachalengev, uh, one, uh, the skeleton, Ha'ela, um, Hayonim, Amud, of course, Ubadia, Fatsael, and uh, Mota, second when he was a second year student. We had a fantastic. Um, experience in Moza, we were digging a sewage pit, uh, we were finding absolutely nothing, but Yoel had the best chant ever uh, in that uh, excavation. And now we go um, into the chef. This is a very serious matter. Uh, people put a lot of energy and time into it. I'm going to show you this little slide twice. And it shows you the, the synergetic between uh, the nutrition and the archaeology. So please, the device, of course, was made below. Please look at the uh, combination. I'm going to try to get the combination between the food and the, and the profession. And please note that the, the, the space that the food takes is a bit bigger than that of the archaeology, which is <laughs> buckets. Okay. So Joel is uh, very well known uh, with his abilities as a chef. And we were all very lucky um, to to be able to enjoy it. You can see, oops. Uh, no matter where, uh, in the house, in the picnic, in the excavations, we all had fantastic opportunities. 
opportunities to taste. And of course, in a very um, care, a lot of care about the expedition, not about himself. I just want to remind you that uh, in the beginning of our careers, we had a volunteer who came after his experience in Vietnam, and he offered, said, uh, take him to your house, and I'm sending with you a, a magash, a, a crate, a magash. A tray of eggs, 30 eggs, and, and Lloyd came to my place, and early in the morning in Jerusalem, he made an omelet of the 30 eggs and ate it all by himself. <laughs> this is very different from the way Yoel behaves, because the friendship and the, and the professionalism as a chef all play a game together. And this is highly appreciated. Okay, this uh, picture is uh, very misleading. I think you can see the title, The Modelist. The picture is very misleading because here you see uh, uh, Yoel and Reela and they are measuring uh, some dirt <laughs> <laughs> somewhere in Africa. But I want you to notice the elegance uh, with which Yoel takes the measure because he really has this um, attitude, special attitude towards the, the, the shirts and the garments and everything. And, and he, he looks experienced when you look at this uh, picture. And indeed, on the right hand side, uh, well, you know, a skeleton, we found it, uh, what can we say? Then it was printed, then it was published, the, the, the regular stuff. But please note uh, the, the shirt of Yoel. Uh, this shirt, uh, I think, followed us for quite a number of years. In the beginning, as you see in this picture, which was taken in probably 1972, uh, there were sleeves. Then Yoel uh, worked in very hot areas and he cut the sleeves. And then we went to uh, East Africa in 1972. And somehow, and why, I don't know, he got fed up with the, sli with the shirt and gave it to somebody in the hotel, to, to one of the uh, employers of the hotel. Coming uh, again to Kenya, how many mm -hmm. years later? About 15, 15 years later, he saw the man with the same shirt. So <laughs> I want, <laughs> this is really something uh, very typical and one should take it very seriously. Uh, professionalism. I, I, I think we've heard a lot from the first speaker, <laughs> uh, but just a few slides to show you uh, how it goes and what are the company and uh, how strange sometimes they look, the this uh, find. And the fact that in this profession you actually go all over the globe, so you can see us here in uh, Kenya crossing the equator. But Yoel is very methodological, and you can see us here visiting the grave sites of some of the, of the hominins in uh, Oldovai Gorge. I think you can see here uh, the grave site, and we paid respect, of course, to all these things. Uh, furthermore, there were very serious discussions on site, bed one in Oldovai Gorge, discussing and uh, listening to our teacher, Ofer Bar Yosef, who by then was the, I think, best scholar and best expert to explain what is going on in uh, Oldovai Gorge. Now it's uh, another game. There are three expeditions. They have very different views. Each uh, dirt is interpreted in different ways. But in the old days, it was uh, quite clear. Uh, the anthropological aspects of his professionalism were also very interesting because we were sitting in the Nairobi Museum and we were looking at uh, stone tools, but Yoel was looking at the Kikuyu and he was particularly interested in the bullet holes in their skulls. So he was comparing here with the Maasai uh, different observations. The professionalism takes you to unknown places with a lot of uh, adventures. And in this adventure, you can see that some of the expedition is going somewhere. Map was not precise, but we are going somewhere. And then 
Uh, night comes and we continue to walk and you can see that Ofer, for example, is carrying a big pot because we don't know what's the quality of the water and Yoel is carrying the jerry can and I was carrying the passport. So there is clear <laughs> division of labor when you look at these things. And finally, we were saved by uh, Richard Leakey and I don't know if he likes that, <laughs> likes us. Uh, because they still today, they tell uh, this uh, story about the expedition of the Israelis who came walking to Lake, uh, then Rudolf, and now Turkana. And of course, they are also nicer and cooler and more civilized uh, encounters uh, with the professionals. And the final uh, photo in my uh, talk is the DNA aspect of the talk. The aspect, I mean, the most important person is, of course, taking the picture, Rika. But the DNA thing is the culmination of all the, what we know about the evolution. And I thank you very much for your attendance.